Hey, it's Mark, but also get a land geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we have all the usual suspects. We've got the Zen master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, back from international travel. Mike, you're looking good. How are you, brother? Thank you. I'm feeling great. And you look great as well. Well, I, I, I appreciate it. And I can tell you, flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> We've got your partner in crime from Nightcap, dude, buddy, the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I am well, Mark. Glad to be here. And you just got back from some interesting, fun travel as well. Yeah, took a little vacation. Uh, it was a good time. Nice, nice. We've got Taria putting in the reps, Harris. Taria, how are things with you? going well just got back from mexico this weekend so awesome time wait weren't you guys just in like bora bora or something or like crazy where were you guys no at? i wish <laughs> no no bora bora is in a few years okay. we're saving up for that trip that's expensive okay all right no worries uh we've got the technician eric peterson eric how are things Things are good, Mark. It's good to see you. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. What's up, guys? Happy to be here. Tate, always a pleasure. Thanks. And last but not least, you know him. You love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration is fine. We've got a good topic, Scott Todd. I can't one, wait. One that's near and dear to your own heart. Because we kind of argue about this a little bit, the two of us. But we're not going to argue. I don't think we're going to argue today. So our topic is, what makes a great sales manager? What makes a great sales manager? So... He loves going first. The Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, what makes a great sales manager? Well, I do love going first, especially on these topics, because I can just start with the broad outline here, then everybody else can gets to fill it in. And I, don't, I think it's harder to go last on these topics. So thank you, Mike. Um, well, first and foremost, I'll go just a couple of basic things. You know, I think it has to be a people person. You know, this is someone who's going to be dealing with the general public and uh, we're in a people business and they need to be a people person. So I want someone who is uh, just generally um, fun to talk to, you know, good personality, just, just a nice people person. I want them to be good at communication, you know, cause there's a lot of communication. I want them to be organized and I want them to be good to follow up. So that's just sort of like the basic parameters I'd start with is, you know, that we're in a people business. So I want them to be, I want them to be friendly, uh, good at communication. Uh, I want them to be good at follow-up and I want them to be uh, organized. So I think that's a framework that I would start with. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm really holding back my, my inner McLaughlin group. Do you guys ever watch the McLaughlin group and they go around with a bunch of journalists? I don't know. I'm, I'm aging myself. Anyways, dude, buddy, nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, what makes uh, a great sales manager? I think uh, a term that I think about when I think of uh, my sales manager is drive. I need them to have the drive to hustle, to follow up, as Mike said. I think that's one of the most important parts of the business is to follow up with your leads, uh, to uh, have the drive to communicate, to keep me in the loop uh, regarding sales, regarding the metrics. You know, what, what's this month looking like compared to the last one? Um, and, and what's the, you know, uh, how are properties flying off the shelves and shelves and, uh, what type of properties are moving, uh, and then the drive to get as many sales as possible because the more sales they get, the more money they get. So I, I just like that term when I think about the sales manager. I love it. I love it. Uh, Taria put in the reps, Harris, what makes a great sales manager? Uh, for us, a good sales manager, uh, one personality, like uh, Zeno said, someone who is 
upbeat, positive, and com communicate effectively with potential buyers. Um, another quality is I want someone who I can train. Like I, I don't believe that if you're not born a salesperson, you can't become you know good at sales. So I want someone who has a great personality and someone that I can train to follow our process for following up with leads, um, collecting information and, and doing the job that we want them to do. So personality, definitely, but trainable, coachable, teachable is important for us. I love it. I love it. Eric, the technician Peterson, what makes a great sales manager? They have to be willing to pick up the phone, right? I mean, we are basically an online business and it's so easy to, to use the tools at our hands, you know, the follow-up boss to, to text somebody or to email them, but it's, it's an extra step and an extra effort to actually pick up the phone and call people. And so many sales are done because we've had a phone call. We've built that relationship. We've built trust. We've answered questions and just been the person on the other side of that phone. It, it makes a big difference in establishing that, that you're a legitimate, you know, seller. Um, and then after that, I'd say initiative, um, you know, kind of like Scott was saying with drive, but initiative in the sense that, um, they're going to go the extra mile because they're motivated by their commission. So that might mean that, you know, we've got leads coming in from all these other sources, but Hey, what if we, what if we found all the builders in this area or whatever in this location and we contacted them directly because they might want to buy our land or whatever creative ideas we might come up with. But the reality is there are so many opportunities on the sales side of the business to, to sell property beyond just the leads coming in. And I want someone that that's creative and takes the initiative to, to go after some of that stuff. All right. All right. Uh, fantastic. Tate, I love it when you call me big Papa Litchfield. Um, you know, I, I agree with what everybody else said here. I'm going to throw a couple different uh, attributes out. I want somebody who's organized, right? I want somebody who is detail oriented. And I can't tell you how important that, uh, that quality is for us because every interaction that we have with somebody, we want to make sure we're taking notes because if this property isn't right for you, there is a high probability that I either have something that would fit your, uh, you know, your needs and wants. And if we don't have it, there's a chance that we'll get it in the near future. And so if you've got somebody who's detail oriented and, and good at taking notes and, and writing things up, it's, it's really easy to get some of those layup sales just by remembering, oh, this person, he wanted a lot out here and wanted it to look like this or whatever, and call them up and say, I know it's been six months, but I finally found the right property for you. We sell a lot of property by just being organized and detailed. And, and the last attribute that's really important to me is something Eric just kind of briefly uh, said, which was money motivated. I want somebody who wants to make money. I want somebody who wants to eat what they kill. Um, I want them to be aggressive. I want them to be a hustler. I want them to work really, really hard because if they do, they know that their earning potential is unlimited. And that's really one of the best uh, attributes that I know of in a salesperson is, is somebody who wants to earn. And if they have opportunities to earn, they can get better at their craft and the better they become at it, the more properties they're going to sell. All right. All right. I, fantastic. <clears throat> Last but not least, and then we're going to start debating the brain, the professor, Scott Todd, what makes a great sales manager? Uh, I say that the number one thing, really the only thing that they need is uh, persistence, right? You know, like they, they cannot stop and they can't take no for an answer. Um, there was, you know, I, I tell the story, Mark, where there was, uh, I was hiring for a sales manager and I told the candidates, I'm looking for someone persistent. And they're like, okay. I'm like, is that you? And they're like, yep, I'm persistent. I'm like, okay, great. That's what I'm looking for right? Like that's important. And they're like, okay. And so then, uh, I said, okay, well, here's what I'm gonna do is I'm going to interview other people and, uh, I'll let you know. 
Like, okay, great. Well, guess what? Some of them never even contacted me again. Is that persistence? Nope. Right off the bat, they're telling you that the, I told them the number one thing I'm looking for is persistence. They weren't persistent. And then I got two people that were persistent, right? Two people. It was like a, a, a horse race, right? And I'm just sitting back seeing who's going to be the most persistent. And uh, like on a Thursday, I get a text from both of them. Friday, I get a text from both of them. Saturday and Sunday, I got a text from one of them. Saturday and Sunday, I was getting emails, texts, phone calls. Hey, I'm interested. Hey, want to know if you have any update. Hey, I, I don't want to be annoying, but I'm very interested and I'm persistent. And on Monday, I hired the person and I never heard from the, the other persistent guy again. So how many times are you going to like that to me is a great test because if someone will follow up with me on, you know, you know, Thursday, Friday, and I never hear from them again next week, well, that tells me that they're not very persistent and that they don't really want this thing. Whereas the person that's, that's calling me, texting me, emailing me, stalking me, that's the kind of person that I want selling for me, right? Like that's a, that's a, that's a winner. So I say it's persistence. If I had to pick one thing, persistence. Yeah, I completely disagree. Anyways, okay. I thought everyone's answers were really good, but I think I have the great answer because at the core of all of this, Scott Todd is not persistence. And Mike Zano, as much as it's nice for somebody to connect with another person, that ain't it either. And Scott Boston, being organized, I'll take a rainmaker who's completely disorganized and find them some organized assistant. That's fine. And Tate Litchfield, yeah, yours was really good. I'll give it. I want somebody who's hungry. Okay, I do. I definitely do. But they're not going to be that hungry after a while, if they can't deal with one thing. And Taria, you kind of, you, I forgot, Taria, what, what did you say again? Because I want to pick on you and Eric a little bit too. Uh, coachable, trainable. Coachable, trainable. Yeah, that's real nice. Anyways, <laughs> not going to make us any money, okay? It's not a bad answer. I'm not saying it's the wrong answer. I'm just not saying, I'm just saying it's not the best answer what we're looking for. Eric, what did you say again? It must have been forgetful. I, I mean, I mean, I, I should be writing it notes. Was, it was phone and initiative, using the phone and taking initiative. Using the phone, taking initiative, right? The, okay. Honestly, they're all really good answers. They're all really important in the sales manager. I completely agree with what everyone said. I just think that mine is the best answer, which is, can you deal with rejection? Because at the very core of sales is rejection. People are going to ghost you. People are going to say no. You're going to hear a lot more no than you hear yes. Do you have a short memory? Number one, will you, you know, do you have ego, right? I want my sales manager, like I want to reject my sales manager right off the gate. I don't want to see who's the most persistent, Scott Todd. I want to see who's got the biggest ego. Call up Tria. Hey, Tria. Yeah, thanks for your, your interview here, but you're just not right for this job. I want to be like, you just made the biggest mistake of your life. Why not? That's ego versus, okay, thank you. And hangs up. What do you think, Scott Todd? Can you deal well, with rejection? I would, because I would once you can deal with rejection, you can do all these other things. And I would tell you that the person that, that is persistent will not accept your rejection and they will keep calling you and hounding you and stalking you. Therefore, I'd say that mine is, you know, better than yours, even though yours is pretty good. Taria, is, is persistence a synonym for I, having thick skin and, and handling rejection? Well, I, I, would, I would say so. I would say persistence means it doesn't matter what you have said, I'm going to proceed on. I would say yes. It's so, a so, so it's a Tria team, Scott. Eric is shaking his head. Eric, <laughs> are you team Scott? I, I'm agreeing with what Tria said. I, I, I totally see that. You know, it, someone that's persistent. They're they're not giving up. 
you can tell them you're not going to buy land today. You're not going to buy a car today, whatever, but they're going to keep mm-hmm. trying. Mm-hmm. Gonna so keep bringing you things, man. <laughs> See, okay. In your yeah, world, but, uh, hold yeah, on. yeah hold on. I, I, I can be persistent. In your world, but if in, in your analogy, they would get rejected and they'd be like, okay, I know you don't want land. So uh, I'll go, you know, get rejected by the next person. They won't take it to heart. In my world, they're going to keep calling you until that phone number goes, doo, 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 the number you reached has been disconnected. <laughs> or grandpa answers. One of those two. Scott, Scott Bossman, what are your thoughts? I mean, I, I think, like I said, if you have the drive, uh, you're not going to let the ghosters affect you, right? You're going to move on to the next deal. You're going to be really good at follow-up. So I see both your points. I think I think both of those things are needed to be a good sales manager. Yeah, I mean, I can follow up all day long, but if like deep down my feelings are hurt all day, I'm not going to have much energy. Hi, Scott. I know this is the 10th time I've called you today, and I know you're probably going to say oh, no. Way. No, but, you can, you uh, I have that, that two and a half acre parcel. You can't. That I, you, you, you know, I wanted to follow up with you again. Mark, listen. No energy. Some, somebody that's going to take the rejection like you're proclaiming, like, and they're just but, picking up the phone to dial because Scott's holding a bat and telling them to dial. Well, yeah, but if Scott's not holding the bat, then, then they're not going to follow up. They're just going to give up. And so I want the person that's persistent, that's going to keep looking for solutions to the problem without Scott having to have a bat there to drive them over and over again. I don't care how many times they've told you no. I don't care how many times they have a problem. That's why they called you. Remember, they have a problem. So solve the problem and you'll get a sale. Zen Master, what do you think? You know, my mind keeps tripping back to a Joseph Campbell story when God walks down the street and one side of his pa- face is painted red and one side is blue and he goes through and the crowd starts arguing, God's blue, no, God's red. And then he turns around and walks the other way. I feel like you guys are talking about the same thing. It's the same side of the coin. Like you're talking about someone who's not going to deal with rejection is persistent. So I think I think you're arguing over the same thing. I, both, I think you're both providing the same answer in a different terminology. So basically you're agreeing with me. So that's, that's, I'm I'm saying that they're both part of the same coin and they're both accurate. (laughs) Two heads of the same coin, Mark. He's saying you're making an argument out of nothing. I think in either case, in either case, you don't want emotion involved, right? You can't have emotion involved in your situation, Mark, and you can't have, you know, emotion involved in your situation, Scott. Land therapy. That's what Land is. therapy. Mike, is your All phone right. ringing right now? <laughs> oh. I didn't disagree with you, Scott Todd. For, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, last time Mike uh, crossed the side of the street, up the side of the street on me, I made his phone magically ring from his own phone number, spooked him and his family, and uh, you know, like then he had to change his phone number. So, you know, I'm just saying. All right. Happy Tate, report. Tate. There's no phone numbers coming in right now. No. Let, no let, let's give Tate the final word on this. And actually, yeah. and, and if those of you who are listening to this, boot camps is already already over, and uh, Tate's does does a module at boot camp on sales. Yeah, I mean, look at the end of the day, I want somebody who who treats, you know, insults or the word no like water off a duck, right? It just it just flows right off them. It doesn't get them down. It doesn't make them depressed. It doesn't make them feel like a failure. They want to know why. But at the same point, I'm looking for somebody who can take a hint, right? I don't want to sit there and chase somebody, call them, text them, emailing them if they have no intention of buying. And so I think that that kind of sums it up for me. And basically what you guys have been saying is, look, we want somebody who's aggressive. We want somebody who can listen. We want somebody who isn't afraid of the letter, the letters N-O, right? In that format. We want somebody who is creative and um, quick on their feet. And a wheeler and a dealer, right? Like, I love it when somebody says, hey, I sold a property. It wasn't for the numbers you wanted, but it's sold. It's like, uh, very, very good. Fantastic. Uh, because the market spoke to them at that moment. And 
they pivoted and adjusted. And as long as they stay within the parameters that we provide, have at it, man, your fingers on the pulse closer, you know, your fingers on the pulse. So I agree with everybody. I think you and Scott are you're on the same page. You know, it's one of those tomato, tomato things, but uh, you guys, you guys work this out. I'm sure. All right. So let's just finish this. Scott Todd, is it tomato or tomato? Tomato. Tomato. Yeah. Doesn't sound Absolutely. as uh, elegant as tomato. Tomato. I, honestly, I, if someone said, can you pass the tomato or is that a cut up tomato? I, I'd like kind of pretentious. No, it's, it it's like, it's like saying, I, no, no, they're just talking like, like if you go to like, like I remember going to like a Starbucks drive through, like, you know, can I get a croissant? Like, <laughs> you I, felt pre- I, I felt pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> I like saying it. It, it, was, it. it felt correct, but it's tomato. Anyway. Unless it's clamato tomato, then it can be tomato, but it's tomato. <laughs> yeah. Well, tomato. Anyways, we just, uh, or I said we, I just offended half the tomato eating population. And uh, I think my ego is big enough to handle the rejection. Scott Todd, I'll show up next week in podcast. Good deal. Not a problem. I'm, I'm persistent. I'll be here too. <laughs> <laughs> Checkmate. Checkmate. So, Tria Harris, we're at that point in the podcast. We're going to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But before you say your tip of the week, Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life by building that passive income so that you don't have to deal with any headaches. No renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Oh, and I know what you're thinking. Well, how much is it, Mark? Don't matter because we guarantee that tuition, you're going to make it back 180 days or less in terms of cash deals. So you owe to yourself to learn more. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Taria Harris, what is your tip of the week? Okay, so my tip of the week is a book. And this book deals with um, how you think. It's called It Takes What It Takes, How to Think Neutrally and Gain Control of Your Life. It's, it, I believe it was written from the premise of athletes and how when you are doing something, especially competing athletically, you have to let what just happened, the last play is over. Get your mind right, get back in the game and proceed forward with what you need to do. And that's kind of what this talked about just overall in our lives, staying in the moment, reacting to each moment as it happens and focusing on influencing your next action. Huh. Trevor, wow, Scott Bossman has it. Scott. Nice. Where, the hard I copy. Just, I, have. I just picked it up at the library. Nice. It's in my stack. Wait, is this is there something going on with this book? How come I've never heard of this? <clears throat> well, it came out in 2020, so most people were preoccupied. Huh. President, okay. This is a CEO and founder of Limitless Minds, a mental conditioning coach to lead performers. Wow, he lives in he lives in Scottsdale. I'm gonna go meet I'll this go, guy. I'll, I'll visit him next week. Yeah, let's go. Let's let's go meet him. <laughs> Very Come cool. on the podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners and remind them that the only way that we're going to have nonsensical debates is if you do us three favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at the I'm going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich, which I believe has a current market value of 2 million Ethereum. For those of you in crypto, that's a complete joke. I have no idea what I just said. So anyways, but it really helps us. And selfishly, it helps us get better guests. So 
please do it for yourself. All right, are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let's let let it um, freedom bring. bring. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.